When you think about building Pascal's triangle, a number in the, in the triangle comes from the sum of the two numbers above it. So this 3 comes from the sum 1 plus 2. But since the triangle represents these binomial coefficients, what that means is that 2 choose 0 plus 2 choose 1 is equal to 3 choose 1. And that fact is true more generally for any value of n. And what we're going to do in this video is give a combinatorial proof of why that is the case. You may have seen Pascal's triangle before. Here I've drawn the first few rows of the triangle. And the key thing to notice is that the outside of the triangle has all ones. And if you want to build up the next row of the triangle, all you have to do is add up the two that are directly above it. So here I've added the one because that's on the outside. And if I want to add onto the next thing, I just say that's a four because one plus three is four. Similarly, this one will be a six. Then here I get a four again and the outside is a one. So in this video, what we're going to do is show you why this method of building Pascal's triangle actually works. The first key thing to notice is that Pascal's triangle is actually made up out of binary coefficients. So this one on the tip top of the triangle is actually representing zero choose zero. Now, if you don't recall this notation, let me just point out that if I have n choose k in this bracketed notation, that's the exact same thing as if I said n c k. If you're unfamiliar with this notation, n c k, meaning n choose k, then just check out this video on my other channel where I explain exactly what that is counting and what it means. So now let's take again a look at Pascal's triangle. And I'm going to look at this yellow version of the triangle where I have all of the binomial coefficients. Here I have 0 choose 0, and then the next row is 1 choose 0, 1 choose 1. Below that I have 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, and 2 choose 2. And I was showing you that to build Pascal's triangle, the way we do it is we look at the two terms that come just above the term we're about to put in, and we add those up. And that's how we got this 4. So what that means is that if you look into this triangle over here that's yellow, what it's telling you is that if you add up 2 choose 0 plus 2 choose 1, you're going to get the same thing as 3 choose 1. It may not be immediately obvious why this is always true. That's what we're going to prove in this video. What we will prove is that n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k is equal to n choose k for any integer n bigger than or equal to 1 and any positive integer k less than or equal to n minus 1. So we can think about this as being somewhere deep inside the triangle and we're filled in a row n minus 1, so somewhere along this row we had the, uh, the term n minus 1 choose k minus 1, and the next term was n minus 1 choose k, and now when we're building the term below it, directly below it, we know that it's equal to the sum of those two. So that's what we're going to prove. So here's the proof. We know that n choose k is equal to the number of k subsets of an n set. And let's call our n set something, so let's say it's 1, 2, up to n. The n set can be any set of n elements, so we can just take our set to be 1 through n. Now let's think about k subsets of an n set, this set s. Well, each k subset is either going to contain this last element n, or it's not going to contain it. So there's two types of subsets, the types that contain the element n and the types that do not. So this whole number is going to be equal to the number of k subsets of s that include the element n, plus the number of k subsets of s that do not include the element n. Now let's think about how we would calculate each of these two numbers. Let's first think about how we'll be able to calculate the number of k subsets of s that include the element n. So over here I'll write down the set s again, and let's say we're creating a subset and we want to figure out how many ways there are to do this. The subset is going to be a k subset, and we know we're going to include the element n, so that one goes in. Now, since it needs to be a k subset, we need k minus 1 more elements to go in. And we have a total of n minus 1 elements to choose from at the moment because we've already used up n. So that means we need the number of ways to choose k minus 1 elements from a set of n minus 1. And that's how we get n minus 1 choose k minus 1. 
Next, let's think about how to calculate the number of k subsets of S that do not include the element n. Here I'm going to write down the set S again. Now when we're selecting a k subset, we know we're going to need k elements. However, when we look back at S, we're not allowed to use the element n. That means we need to select k elements from a set of only n minus 1 things. So that is n minus 1 choose k. And that completes our proof. We've just shown that n choose k is equal to n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. And that's exactly how building Pascal's triangle works. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe. See you next time!